Police Knots was sort of a follow-up to Hideo Kojima's classic, Snatcher, as it's a point-and-click visual adventure novel type of game with some shooting sections. Released in 1994 for the PC-9821, and no, I have absolutely no idea what the hell that is, this title was never officially released in North America. However, in 2009, an unofficial English patch was released for the PlayStation, and thus, I got to play this strange and fascinating title. Does it impress me as much as Snatcher? Not quite, but it manages to be quite an impressive feat for the time, and a really enjoyable experience with a great story. The game centers on Jonathan Ingram, one of the five police knots, astronauts with police training assigned to ensure the safety of Beyond Coast, mankind's first fully functional space colony in the year 2013. Yep, uh, missed the math on that one, Kojima. Jonathan tests a new space walking suit, but drifts away into space by accident and is presumed dead by his colleagues. He's found alive and well 24 years later, thanks to the cold sleep module connected to the suit. So, he manages to keep his same body, except he's 24 years in the future. Three years later, Jonathan, who's now working as a private investigator in old Los Angeles, is visited by his former wife, Lorraine, who asks him for his help in solving the disappearance of her current husband. The only clues the husband left behind are a torn leaf, a set of capsules, and the word Plato. Jonathan is reluctant to take her case at first, but eventually agrees as he returns to the space colony and partners up with his former partner, Ed, in order to solve the mystery. However, the ties to the past bind Jonathan in the present, as he uncovers the terrible secrets of the colony and his own dark past. The story of the game certainly has its highs, but it also has a couple of pretty glaring lows. It's a plot right out of a movie, uh, well, like literally out of Lethal Weapon and Coma. So it has a lot of predictable twists, character archetypes, and nonsensical moments. On the other hand, it manages to get in some really good hard science fiction here. Kojima puts together a really technically believable world that you can really get sucked into, and you'll want to know more about how it works, and how the politics work, how the technology works, and there's a lot of detail and it's a believable world. The game asks hard questions about whether humans belong in space, whether better technology brings out the better or worse side of humanity, and how boob physics work in space. As you can see, it's a story with many layers. One issue I have with this game's story is the pacing. After a really compelling introduction, the first few chapters of the game is generally just a very slow investigation with not a whole lot of action until towards the end. There's a lot of long scenes where you're basically just reading a lot of techno babble, a lot of medical techno babble, and just trying to figure out what you're supposed to be doing or where the plot went. Then the rest of the game just becomes a whirlwind of action with little mystery solving at all. In fact, the first part of the game feels so slow that I actually stopped playing the game a few hours in because I lost patience and I had to return to it months later. However, aside from that kind of slow start, I think it's a really great plot that I believe matches Snatcher in terms of mystery and suspense, although I think it's not as well paced and it gets a little slow and predictable. Still, I really enjoyed it, and like Snatcher, I really think that this would make such a good movie. The characters in the game are fine for what they're supposed to be. Most of them are super one-dimensional stereotypes, but that's kind of what the game was going for. Jonathan is your typical loner badass with a heart of gold, kind of like Spike Spiegel, but I really, really like this character arc. Ed is your typical sidekick, but he also has a really, really cool arc, although the end of it is very, very predictable. The other characters you meet are also strong personalities, and the villains in particular are fun and easy to root against. Although this game is framed like a simple science fiction action movie, that's not really a bad thing, and 
I like that it has layers. It can be a stupid, goofy action movie at one point, like a buddy cop drama kind of thing, but then at other points it can be hard sci-fi that asks some really interesting philosophical questions. The gameplay is also pretty interesting. It's your typical point-and-click affair, though it's very, very slow to move that cursor around on the PS1. There are also some interesting twists in the gameplay, like the gunfights. Again, you have to use a cursor, so my aim was never great, and the hit detection was really, really wonky, but it's still a great change of pace from the slower gameplay. The final fight was a bit anticlimactic, though. Of course, no spoilers here. You also had a section where you had to deactivate a bomb, which was so well done and tense that I absolutely loved it. It was probably my favorite part of the game. You do have to do a bit of actual mystery solving too, I guess that's the other part of the gameplay, but like many games in this genre, much of the challenge is just figuring out what the hell to do next. The game only takes 10 to 15 hours tops to beat, but it can feel like a lot longer if you're doing that without a walkthrough. Still, overall, the gameplay has a lot of variety and it was a lot of fun. The graphics in the game are outstanding. I'm only talking about the PlayStation version, but in this version at least, the character designs were detailed and colorful. And there was a lot of actual animation that was really well done. The locations were all detailed and very visually interesting, and I enjoyed learning more about this world and honestly thinking that it might probably function in the real world. That was really cool. My favorite part of the game were the little touches though in the graphics. For example, there's one scene where you're having a long dinner conversation, and at first, the food starts out steaming hot. But as the conversation goes along, the food slowly loses its steam. It's great little touches like that that really makes this game stand out, and it just makes it a joy to look at. The music in the game wasn't bad, I would just say it's probably average. It's nowhere near as memorable as the Snatcher soundtrack, which to be honest was a really really tough soundtrack to beat. There were some good themes that stick with you I'd say, like the main title theme, uh, End of Dark, and the shooting scene music, I forget what it's called. The music fits and it would certainly fit an action movie, so it does its job but nothing to write home about. To conclude, Police Knots is a great little title that doesn't get enough recognition. It gives you a great story with memorable characters, though the pacing is a little bit off at the beginning. The gameplay elements are slightly flawed as well, but they still provide excitement and entertainment. The music and graphics combine to give this game quite some charm, and you can definitely see how it influenced some of Kojima's later work. If you're a fan of Snatcher, then playing this one is a no-brainer. If you want a good sci-fi story with a touch of mystery and some great 80s action movie cliches, then this one is definitely for you. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you later, Space Cowboy.